Welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm going to review the iconic Olympus XA Rangefinder Compact, introduced in 1979 and produced by Olympus until 1985. We're going to cover the following. The history behind the design of the XA, loading film, controls and using the camera, and my amazingly talented photographer friend Gianluca will show us how he uses the XA. The most well-known 35mm rangefinder that everybody might be familiar with is the Leica. However, compact rangefinder cameras were popular until the mid-70s and they usually had some form of auto-exposure. Rangefinders focus by using a movable mirror which projects two images onto the same area of the viewfinder. As the two images align, the subject is in focus. In 1979, Olympus released the XA, designed by Yoshihisa Maitani the genius who designed the Olympus OM-1 and OM-2. It's quite beautiful, exuding functionality as well as a beautiful design. You can find one of these on eBay for around £145, which is about $180. As you open it up, revealing the lens, you turn the camera on. It's an aperture priority automatic rangefinder that has a clever shell design which protects the lens while it's in your pocket. It has a 35mm f2.8 telephoto lens. It just means that it's designed so that the distance between the lens and the film plane is shorter than the effective focal length. Because the lens doesn't stick out, the shell is able to close. The aperture setting is this switch on the left. It goes from f2.8 to f22. There's another setting at the top for flash, which I'll show you when we talk about the flash gun. Above the lens is a distance scale, so you can choose to focus by estimating the distance if you wish. Underneath the lens is the ISO setting. This only goes from 25 to ISO 800. When the XA was released, this was fine. The slowest Kodachrome was 25 ISO, and most fast film was only 4 or 500 ISO. However, this doesn't match current films, which go up to 3200 ISO in the case of T-Max from Kodak or Ilford Delta. You can see on the left-hand side, the shutter speed chosen for the aperture that you've set is indicated by a needle. As you change the aperture or the ISO, the meter cell above the lens is covered up or uncovered to reduce or increase the light reading. This is obviously going to alter the area that the reading is taken from. As you move the lever under the lens, you can see the two images aligning as the subject comes into focus. You have to have reasonable light and a fairly contrasty subject to focus on. Loading film is quite simple. Open the back, put the film in, Pull the leader across, wind on one frame, then close the back. Wind on another two frames. You can see the frame counter on the right. The shutter release is on top and is very quiet. However, you may have difficulty finding this as it doesn't stick out like an SLR release does. The only feedback you get when pressing the shutter is a very faint click. I don't find the aperture convenient to set without taking my finger from the shutter release, so I find this a little fiddly to use. On the bottom of the camera is the tripod socket here. This is the battery compartment. The manual says you need SR44 batteries, not LR44. This is the rewind clutch, so when you finish the film, you press that in, and that allows you to rewind the film using this lever here. You rewind it all the way back into the cartridge, and then you can remove the film. This switch has multiple uses. First position increases the exposure by one and a half stops, in case your subject is strongly backlit and has fooled the meter into underexposing. Second position gives a high-pitched whine if your battery is okay. The third position is a self-timer, so when you take a picture using this, the light next to the aperture setting flashes for 12 seconds. Now let's attach the flash gun. It was usually sold with the A11, but I have the A16, which is similar but more powerful. Just match the flash to the camera, and then screw it on with that lever there. 
Now turn the flash on by pushing up to this flash mark here on the aperture dial. When the light on the top comes on, your flash is ready for taking pictures. For me, there are several issues with a flash gun. It takes a while to charge. It doesn't read the ISO from the camera. You have to set it on the flash just here. Unlike the camera, which goes from ISO 25 to 800, the flash only has two settings, 100 and 400. Finally, adding the flash turns the camera from being compact to being the size of a brick. I think this aspect of the camera is what makes it less usable when you go out and light is poor, such as in a pub or a club. My amazingly talented friend Gianluca tried the camera, and you can see here how he got on with it. Okay, so this is me trying this camera for the first time. And by the way, I'm good at taking pictures with digital cameras. I'm not really an expert to have uh, film ones. But um, so this Olympus is quite nice. You can uh, open and you have uh, the, the choice of aperture here, correct? On the side. And here the focusing help for the range finder. Uh, it's a, a faint shadow image that you have to overlap to be sure that it's in focus. So I just need to um, check. So it's off oh, this maximum aperture. Uh, 2.8, cool. Where, where, where is the shutter speed? It sets it for you. Ah, ah because it's, it's in aperture priority. Okay, I get it. Okay, so smile. <laughs> oh, oh. What? Ah, it's this one. No. Ah. Okay, loaded. Wow, that was really silent. Almost undetectable. This sounds good for street photography. Let's go out there and try it on the street. Okay, let's try another shot. This time, f2.8. Try to have more blurry background. The Olympus XA is an iconic camera design. For 1979, it was truly inspirational. It's wonderful to be able to focus accurately using a rangefinder rather than just guessing the distance or using zone focus. Gianluca showed how great it is for street photography in good light. However, I don't think this is the go everywhere compact that it first appears. When the light goes down, you see how restrictive it is. You can't use modern, very high ISO film. You have to attach the dumpy flash, which doesn't allow you to set the ISO accurately. For me, the XA is something that I would have kept in a display cabinet. However, my resolution for 2024 is to only keep the cameras that I've put film through. These magnificent old machines stop working and seize up if you don't use them. And so keeping the film in a cabinet feels like depriving other photographers of one of the last remaining film cameras. So this one is going back on eBay. I hope you found this useful. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe.